Hey there again folks, Daniel with Air Down, and today it's about Dana 60. Alright, you watched me do the 10 and a half. Now, it's time for the Dana 60. Here's the axle housing. It's time to start doing stuff to it. I'm going to tear these, uh, a couple bearings off of this stuff. I'm going to drop the ring gear out because a little secret I'm going to reveal right now. I ordered the shave kit for this guy, so I'm going to also shave the front axle. And they say most of the time your ring gear doesn't need shaved, but it just might. So we're going to get this prepped. I say this all the time, but I am so freaking in love with this impact gun. Ring gear. This is a Dana 60 ring gear. This is a Ford 10.5 ring gear. I thought it would be fun to kind of just show you the difference here. Here's a side by side. Diameter versus diameter. This view for your viewing pleasure. You can see just how much taller this one stands. Also pay attention to how tall the tooth is, like that, on both of them. This is that super awesome bearing puller that I borrowed from a friend. I built the 10.5 first, but now just sitting here looking at this Dana 60, it seems small and almost puny. The size of the carrier, the size of the ring gear, the size of the carrier bearings, it's just ridiculously small. I gotta get that out of my head. I've only ever used Dana 44s my whole life, so I can't go getting a big head about what gears are small and big. Yeah, and here's our bearing. Lickety split. Rain is awesome, huh? And now I want to pull this bearing off. Okay, here's the pinion, the Dana 60 pinion. I just saw a dirt for a bug and I killed it. Why? Because I went over to Ann Town and I wants to go in this Ann hometown and and I killed it, and it was killed away. So, if I follow this correctly, you killed a bug that was trying to hurt the ants? Uh huh Well, good job, baby. Yeah, I'm a superhero this night. Ants, home. You're the ant superhero? Yeah. Nice. All right, here we have the Ford 10.5 pinion and the Dana 60 pinion. This is a Super Duty Dana 60, by the way, 9904. And uh, they're both 373, so look at the difference in size. That's pretty much ridiculous, the difference. It's just kind of cool. Super Duty rear axle, Super Duty front axle. And this does look small and, and totally dinky when you compare it with the the 10.5. Alright, I'm back on this grind, and today what I'm going to do is clean the axle tubes, or at least what I'm going to do right now. And for doing that, I bought this little 3 inch brush. I brought, bought several sizes, not knowing which one would fit. But this one's really close, and as it starts to spin, it goes in. I already did the long side tube, and I did it with, <laughs> with this. That and a little quarter inch drive at the end, and there was actually enough torque on the brush to where I could actually pull it back out of the tube all the way and it never wanted to slip off. So uh, now that I've done the hard side, I'm going to do the easy side for you. Well, as you can see, this thing kicks up quite a bit of dust, and it actually gets pretty hot while it's running. The drill's under a lot of load. I have to, like, fight it from turning. 
But uh, this drill being that like nice brushless one, it really handles it well. But uh, it sure is a whole crap load cleaner than when it started. Well, I had the truss on here, as you saw before, but um, that was just, I just had it on there mocking stuff up. What I'm going to do, you can probably see, I've been cleaning the housing and uh, I ran out of wire brush, which is sort of the reason why I went and got a bunch of wire brushes today. But I used this poor bastard right down to the last little nubbins. And I know how much you guys love videos of people cleaning things, so. I'll just put a little quick blip in here and then we'll move on with our lives. Look, my new one is pretty and red. We'll see how many of these wire bastards shoot out and catch me in the face. So check this out. I didn't see this earlier, but look how much Nasty, dirty, rusty crap came out of those tubes. It's insane. I've always wanted to try one of these little drill brushes, but I never have done it, And but now I'm going to actually try it. Get into all these weird little spots I can't normally reach and see if these are worth anything or not. All right, I have to admit, this thing is 100% awesome. I had my doubts, sincere doubts, that this would even do anything, but it's taken all these pockets where I can't get, and it's just annihilating them. And I didn't expect this to hold up long to a drill with this much pasta, but it's really not doing half bad. I officially can't believe what this thing can do. This thing is a riot. And in the hands of a really nice drill like this, boom. What else is there in life? I'm gonna attempt to clean these up a little bit and get them uh, ready for paint. And man, are they dirty. This is not gonna be easy. Here we go, anyway. All right, the knuckle has been welded, the knuckle has got the high steer arm stuff on it, this knuckle has been cleaned, the other one's still dirty as heck sitting on the garage floor over there. Now the last thing to do is to build it back out. We need to put ball joints in it, and I'm going to put that big bolt and nut through here. But just as a little showcase, I painted this with new cast from VHT. It's basically just a cast iron colored spray paint. I've got this big nasty bolt here, and uh, this has this is untouched. I have not touched this bolt yet. This is the original bolt that I was using to do all the mock-up, and you can see time did not treat it well. I was having a debate with myself. Did I do bolt this way with the extra bits of the bolt sticking down? Or should I do bolt this way with the nut and the extra bits of bolts sticking up? The chances of catching this on any kind of rock is really low. And I think that it would look best bolted from the top. I want this to sort of be a showcase, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the I want it to be pretty route. Okay, I've got this just kind of pinched down barely and we're gonna start working this bolt on. It's a bit of a tight fit. Right, bolt is on, and it's still got a little bit of that golden shine. And I don't know why, but this is how much bolt sticks out of the bottom of that nut. So if it becomes a problem, I doubt it will, but if it becomes a problem, I'll just saw it off. I'm trying to figure out which ball joint to do first. So I think the upper one has to go on first, followed by the lower one last. 
I have pr plum run out of brake clean, so I'm gonna be using this. Also, I have these ball joints set out here, and they're spicers. What I'm using the acetone for is to clean these holes where the ball joints go, because I didn't bother to mask them off or anything. Okay, well, these gloves and acetone don't get along very well. Okay, so we'll use this thing, and we'll use a hammer as well. It's working its own way on pretty easy. Now let's see. Now when I do that, I got it on level one and that's like 80 to 100 foot pounds. And then when it starts to struggle, I'll come along and just give it a love tap here. It's better if you do it with the socket on and you're not an idiot. That way, you can still force it on without going nuts. But that's only when you just don't have much thread engagement. If you have more thread engagement, then you can use a little bit higher setting. Now one last visual inspection. And that's gotta be bottomed out. That's just all there is to it. It's walking it right on. You just heard the pitch change, which means this just bottomed out on that. Yep, there it is. Bottomed out. My homie that used this for ball joints just before me said that he had to make this little metal spacer, and I imagine that this is the time for it to shine. Yeah. Looks like that's exactly what its job is. It's kind of thin. It looks like it's just exhaust pipe. We'll see if it's got the nuts to hold up to this. I got full thread engagement, and this isn't buckled yet. So I'm giving it the full beans, level three. Here we go. just flung everywhere. Bad. Bad. Man, do I like having a nice impact gun. Well, let's put the snap ring on it and call it a day. I don't know if y'all remember when I bought these, but these are the best freaking snap ring pliers a man could ask for. Maybe not the best he could ask for, but it's sure nice to have a heavy duty pair. Because it's just that easy. Last thing I have to do is thread this nut on so I don't lose it. And boom! That is the 04 or 99 to 04 Super Duty Knuckle ball jointed, high steer armed, and then high steer arm bolted. What I really want to do is put the Spin Tech kit on this. That way it's super strong, everything's chromoly, and I can have a, a disconnectable hub and a 35 spline outer stub shaft so I can run like a long field joint or a CTM joint and uh, I should be able to rock 42s without even a hint of worry. So, anywho, that's what the future plans for this guy are. Right, as part of welding the bottom on this, I'm also going to weld the tubes to the center section on this and uh, that just adds that last little bit of strength. So. That's what I'm going to be doing now. I'm going to preheat this whole area and run it in the loop. And then uh, in between each bead, I'm going to be needle scaling it. You see the needle scaler here. And then at the end of all that, I'll be wire wheeling it. So you see the wire wheel there. And uh, I mean, the tubes won't spin with the truss on for sure. And the truss will be welded to the center section, but it's just that added little bit of extra safety just in case. All right, I've got the map gas here. And then I've got my little temperature guy here, which will go up to like 400 degrees or something. And because I, oh, I should mention, 
I've got Nikor Ni55 wire in here from Blue Demon. It's actually like a nickel iron mix welding wire and it's perfect for this type of like welding steel to cast. Um, so less preheat is necessary and it's a whole lot less likely to crack. GoPro's. GoPro, stop recording.